Now, and we're now back for playing Eternal Darkness. Yes, I don't know about you, but I can't help but think it's a terrible idea to follow the voices in your head directing you to some weird rocks in the sand somewhere. I think it's a fantastic idea. I'd do it. <laughs> oh, by the way, funny thing about that conversation we've just seen there between the two Centaurians and Pius Augustus here. From Metal Gear Solid 4. And the Centurions are played by, well, Snake from <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 4. Yes, well, all the Metal Gear Solids, I suppose. Yes, it's got quite the voice cast, actually, we discovered. Yeah, all the characters will be very familiar, especially to people who have played uh, Legacy of Kane or Metal Gear Solid. Which is very neat. Oh, we're going to have a, another skeleton battle here. Uh, Alexander Roivas. Look at that good torch there. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander Roivas is uh, Naomi Campbell. And also uh, Billy's mother from <laughs> Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, as well as many, many other roles. Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, for example. Yeah. I was going to say, one of the things I like to do with skeletons is chop their heads off. Yeah. Was it somewhat dull, the horror, to know that Pius Augustus is actually played by Ben Ten's granddad? Or? I don't think so, no. <laughs> I think it's interesting because obviously they've all worked with each other. That's so like they just happened to ask a bunch of people that knew each other. I see you're going for the complete dismemberment. <laughs> tactic, it's more fun, yeah. yeah. Oh, the same as we're now the second character in the game because eventually you get to play loads and loads of different characters, which I really like. Multiple There's a great viewpoints. story. Multiple characters. Pick up a granite block. Although, if that's granite, that must weigh a ton. <laughs> skeletons? Are they skeletons? What do you call them? Zombies, maybe? Zombies. There's a bit too much flesh left on to be uh, skeletons, I think. Oh, I guess. Finish it. Yep. To get it in there. Got right, we've got a another granite block. We have a granite chopping board, and it weighs a ton. And it I have does, trouble carrying yeah. it around the kitchen. I'm not convinced you'd be able to carry all these blocks either. Well, he is a centurion, so you know, that would be pretty nails. Yes, I think Michaela, by the way, that's Michaela and Ampita. The I think Michaela's tactic is uh, dismemberment to try and get as rid of many of the limbs as possible and kill them in the meanwhile. Well, the advantage to taking their head off is that they then stop following you around and they can also accidentally start hitting each other if they're close enough to each other. A lot of the time it's simply that they'll stop chasing you around. Not that the game, to be fair, is particularly difficult, really. Oh, there we go. That's our last one. Well, not particularly do. difficult, dependent upon the choice that yeah, you make at the, near the choices. beginning. It's our third granite block. I'm not even sure why he'd carried them in those giant shoulder things, maybe. More creepy voices talking to us. Oh. Yes, I really like that because, like, the character looks as it as well. It's like jump scary, but in a good way. The door was barred off with bars. I 
There's another one of them granite blocks in the centre. Now, I've done my best with this game to uh, edit out all of the different aspect ratios into some sort of more sensible solution. Because the, the game has this very strange habit of being in widescreen 4x3, 4x3 with a widescreen inside it, and 16x9 with another widescreen inside <laughs> it, so it's a bit strange. So I've tried to fix that. I think a lot of the time with games past a certain age, you can only really do your best at sort of capturing them. But we'll strive to. I think the idea is to make it look as good as we can, which is pretty good. Yes, uh, granite block the four. They've all got these symbols on them, and we can just match them up to where they need to go. like all granite block receptacles, they light up when you put them in. <laughs> I've forgotten which one that was, blue. It has been a little while really since we played this, so I don't actually remember sort of the names of everything, but I'm sure we will by the end. I think Peter remembers them a bit better. Chaturga, Uliath, Selatath, and Mantarok. Yeah. Alrighty. Can I go forward? Hmm. Prove your worth by destroying this statue. As opposed to all the enemies you've just killed. <laughs> yes, because the sort of it's almost like a combat tutorial, except we've been playing this now for quite a while. So it feels a bit late for a combat tutorial, but there you go. Well, it sort of gives you an extra detail, I suppose. actually selecting the other arm. There we go. Oh, it's just left, right, etc, isn't it? Occasionally you sort of press up, I think. I think again in this stream there's only the one thing we can do. Press the giant ancient button. Ancient button. <laughs> Three pedestals, got a red clawed worm, a dark green emerald, which is a warped angel, and what's the other one? It's a delicate dome, a pale blue statuette, hmm. which is going to be the one I'm going to claim. It is.
moons have passed since then, and I have learned much. All at once, I understood. The forces of the multiverse all made sense under the transcending power of Ulyoth. No mountain too high, no city too far. Face me, and you shall surely perish. We've now acquired the to to tome, tomb, tome of eternal darkness. <laughs> After that rather interesting interlude, because it doesn't really sort of tell you what's going to happen, whether you pick one or the other sort of artifact, what's it for? It's all a bit of a mystery. Very interesting, though. Is there anything else I should do, or do I just read that chapter? Honestly, at this point, I just read the chapter, but that would be a good place to leave it. Alrighty. So we'll read the, it next time instead. We'll see you again next time. Bye.